excited. I know I've been talking about this for the past like month, how excited I am to start back to school. But this first video has been like looming on my insides. I've been so excited to release it and now I'm finally doing it. Yes. So as you can probably see from the title, since you clicked on the video, this is part two to my DIY notebook video. I did this video last year and it was my very first video to ever hit 1 million views. It was big. It was a big deal for me. If you didn't see that video, make sure that you click the annotation on the screen right now or the link in the description. That way you can go and watch part one before you watch part two. So part two to my DIY notebook video features three new notebooks and I seriously love all of them. They're all so cute and so pretty and I cannot wait to use them when I go back to school. Yay, so um, let's just stop rambling. Let's get to the video because this one's going to be awesome. Let's go. Okay guys, so notebook number one is a Paper Towns themed notebook. You know how I love my John Green. So what you're going to need for this is a notebook, paint, a black marker, a Paper Towns cutout, which you can find in the description, a map, and also some Mod Podge, which I forgot to include in this clip. So you're going to start off by laying down the part of the map that you want on your notebook down. And all I did was sort of use my finger and trace around the edge to sort of make an indent. That way I knew how big the cover would be on the map. And once you're finished with that, we can start designing the cover of the notebook. So you're going to take the cutout and lay it down where you want it. And then use a pencil to trace the outline of this little pin. If you're not familiar, this is the pin that is on the cover of the Paper Towns novel. And so I just printed that out. Like I said, you can find that same picture in the description. That way you can print yours out and trace it onto your map. And also what I'm doing is adding some lines to make it look like the pin is actually going through the paper as best I can. And now I'm going to paint the pin red. And the pin is red on the cover of the book, which is why I chose that color. But you could do whatever color you wanted. I'm just using this little itty bitty brush. That way I can get into all the corners and crevices and just doing a nice even layer of red paint throughout. When I did the stem of the pin, I did sort of streaky motions. That way it didn't look so concrete and it would look more like it's going through the paper rather than just sitting on top of it. And then you're going to let that dry. And once it's dry, you're going to pour some Mod Podge onto the cover of your notebook and spread it out so that's a nice even layer. And somehow I lost this clip, but all I did was trace around where I had made those indents and then cut it out. That way it would actually fit on the cover of the notebook. And now I'm just lining the notebook up with the edges of the seam there. As you can see, I taped it off. That way the Mod Podge wouldn't get in the way. And Mod Podge doesn't dry right away, so don't worry if it sort of slips around a little bit. You'll be able to keep manipulating it until it's perfectly in place. And once it is, you can go ahead and push it down until it is completely stuck on. Now to make the pin stick out a little bit more, I'm just using a black marker and I am going to trace it to make it a little bit more bold and then I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more detail to the pin. So now as you can see, I am looking at the little pin cutout that I have and just copying some of the details that they had. So I want to make sure that the bottom of the pin is shown and I want to make sure that I get the little top indents correct. So all I'm doing is going back in and adding that detail. And lastly, I am adding a quote to the cover of the book. And this says, the town was paper, but the memories weren't, which is sort of how the book got its name, Paper Town. So I figured that that was a good quote to add on to there. And 
And then I decided that I wanted to add a little line as if I was tracing a mark of where I wanted to go and I made sure that it ended at where the pin was as if I had stuck the pin into my final destination. You can do this if you want to. I really like the way that this made it look, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And this is the finished product. I think this is so cute and a great addition to our little John Green book themed notebooks. Notebook number two is sort of a paint splattered effect. So what you're going to need for this is a notebook, paint colors of your choice, and some painter's tape. So you're just going to start off by covering the entire cover front and back of your notebook in white paint. This was a little bit time consuming. I did do quite a few coats and then I ended up letting it dry overnight. That way I could make sure that it was completely ready to go to add more paint on top of it. So you want to make sure that you allow yourself enough time to do that. If you can, maybe you can use spray paint. That might work a little bit better. Um, but this is what I did. I probably added three or four coats of white paint on there. Also don't stress out too much about it because we are putting more things on top of it. So even if some of the black or design still shows through, you're going to be covering up even more. So it turned out to not be an issue at all, even though some of it you could still see through the white paint. So once it is completely dry, this was the next day for me, you're going to start taping off your design. So the first thing I had to do was tape off the edges. So I did both sides and then I just added one to the middle to section it off that way. And then I also decided that I wanted the top and bottom to have a clear white line also. So I'm adding those on. And then you're going to cut smaller pieces of tape and start adding on the diagonal lines. I used my tape to actually line up. That way I would make sure that the diagonal lines were parallel to each other. And after that, you can just line up the ones below it with the one above it. That way everything is nice and even. And now all you're going to do is just start randomly adding paint in short little strokes wherever you want on top of the notebook. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, as you can see. Um, since I was starting off with this base color, I was filling them in quite a bit, but you'll see as I add more colors on, I just add a little bit to each little square. <clears throat> the messier and sort of weirder it looks, the better, and you want to try to smear the paints together as best you can, because that's going to make it look really cool and sort of like you just threw things on there. And once that is completely dry, you're going to go ahead and peel your painter's tape off. Unfortunately, my painter's tape ran a little bit. You can see some of the tapes or some of the paint seep through the tape, so I didn't get perfectly clean lines. I still thought it came out really cool looking, uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it if that happens to you, but just keep that in mind that that is a possibility that that could happen. And once you are finished peeling off all the tape, you are finished with our second notebook. I think this one is so cute. You can do it with whatever colors you want. It's totally customizable. And you can do whatever design you want. You don't have to do something just like this. I think it's really cool and something that you can really make your own. And this is the last notebook and my personal favorite out of all of them. It looks like the burn book from Mean Girls. It's so cool. So there's quite a few supplies. You're going to need brushes, a notebook, a marker, pink paint and white paint, Mod Podge, the burn book letters, which you can find in the description, and a black pas pastel. So I just painted the cover white the same way that I did in the last notebook. So you can just follow those same steps. And now I am adding a layer of pink on top of it. I ended up doing um, about two coats of white and two coats of pink. That way it would be really opaque and look really awesome for our burn book. And you're going to set that aside to dry. Make sure that it is totally dry before you start doing this next step. But I just started to add on the burn book letters. I just looked at a picture of the burn book from Mean Girls and sort of copied the same way that they did that. You can do the same thing. You can look at the way that I am doing it, whatever makes you feel better.
position the way that you want it. You're going to go ahead and start adding Mod Podge on top of the letters and positioning them where you want them. It's a little bit tricky because the Mod Podge can sort of pull the letters around, so you sort of have to hold them in place until they're completely sealed down. So I just continued that step with all of the letters and then sort of filled in that middle section. Also, that way it would have a nice glossy finish there. And once you're finished adding the Mod Podge to all those letters, you're just going to go ahead and cover the rest of the notebook. It's going to add a glossy effect, so if you only do the letters, then it'll only be glossy over top of the letters, and it's going to look sort of weird. And then I went ahead and peeled off the tape. That way you can see the nice binding of the notebook. So once that is totally dry, you can add the kissy marks. As you can see, I just put on some red lipstick and kissed in between there. And this will not smudge once you seal it in with Mod Podge, so don't worry. And then I used a pencil to start filling in all the little doodles I want to do, but you couldn't even see it when I was filming it. So I went ahead and cut that out and just added in the part where then I traced over all of that with a marker. I just once again looked at the burn book and looked at some of the designs that they did and copied the big things. The big things that you really want to make sure that you have on there is along the bottom it says Gibble. I don't know why. And it also says Mean. And then at the top it says Stab. So you want to try to get some of those in there since those are the really iconic pieces from the burn book. And then to add this sort of smudgy, dirty look that the burn book has, I'm just taking a pastel and smudging it all over the book and just making it look as dirty and messy as possible. And once you're finished, you're going to go ahead and seal that in with some Mod Podge, and then you are all done. And this is the finished product. I seriously think this came out amazingly. It's so cute. None of it will smudge the pastel, the lips. None of it will smudge once you seal it down with a little bit of Mod Podge. And I think that this is the perfect notebook to bring you into back to school. So that is it for our very first back to school video. I hope that I didn't like build it up too much and then you guys watched and were like that wasn't that great because I think it's pretty great and I hope that you guys thought it was pretty great too and I hope that you guys make them and if you do make sure that you tweet me a picture to at Jason Morelli with the hashtag DIY with PXB because that's how I find them and then I can retweet them and I can follow you and DM you and talk about how awesome your notebook is because all of your notebooks always come out awesome. Recently, a lot of people have been tweeting me pictures of them doing my notebooks from part one, and they always come out like way better than mine. You guys rock. You're awesome. I love you. And I will see you next time with a new back to school video. Yes. There's three new notebooks. And there is, oh. Oh my God, I've never seen that neighbor before. And he is so cute. Wow. Oh god, it's so hot in here when I don't have my AC on and it makes too much noise and I'm filming.